Here we're going to look at how to determine the type of lease based on some lease testing criteria. And what we're going to start out here with is the lease here, and we're going to apply some lease testing here. And our lease testing criteria is in, in going to include a transfer of ownership, uh, a bargain purchase option, economic life test here on the lease, and recovery of the investment. And this is the key point that we're going to make in this presentation. We're going to be looking at the lessee's interest rate versus the lessor's interest rate. And that's going to be the incremental rate here for the lessee versus the implicit rate here for the lessor and which one of these interest rates we're going to use here for the present value of the minimum lease payments. So let's go over and look at our lease arrangement here. We have yearly rental here of $7,114 uh, per year here for the rental rate. And then the lease term is three years. Estimated economic life here is five years. And then we have a purchase option here of $6,000 at the end of the third year and that approximates the fair, fair value of the at least the asset here at the end of the third year. That would also be $6,000. Then we have a renewal option here of $3,000 with no penalty. But then we come down here to fair market value of the leased asset. It's going to be $20,000 here at the start of the lease. And the cost to the lesser is also $20,000. And then we have an unguaranteed residual value here of $6,000. So we're not going to include that in our present value of the minimum lease payments because it's unguaranteed. Then we get down here to our key point that we're going to look at here and that's going to be the incremental interest rate here for the leasee that we know of tw at 12 percent and then we have the implicit interest rate here of the leasee in this case I have a uh, no, I, I had it listed here at 15% because I calculated it out. But we may not know what the exact interest rate is here, but we may be given the present value of the minimum lease payments for the lesser. In either case, we have to know one or the other here. So uh, in this case, I've got the known amount here. for the, It's known by the lessee of the implicit interest rate of the lesser is 15%. And then we have some executory costs here, and the key is that they're paid here by the lesser and that's $1,000 per year. So we're not going to include those in the rental payment because they're paid here by the lesser. And then our present value of the minimum lease payments. Either In this case, using the incremental rate here for the lessee at 12%, we're going to get $16,448 for those minimum lease payments. And then using the implicit rate here for the lesser, that was that 15% rate here versus the 12% that we're using for the lessee here. Uh, using the 15% rate we're going to be looking at sixteen thousand fifty four dollars but we may not we're, we may be given the implicit interest rate here and not the present value of the lease payments or vice versa so this is what we have to work out but none the nonetheless here either the implicit uh, present value of the minimum lease payments are known by the lessee or the interest rate here uh, that the lesser is using is known by the lessee. So that's the key point here. And then again, the estimated fair value of the asset here at the end of the lease is $6,000. So what our rule of thumb here with these uh, with our lease payments here uh, on what interest rate we use. We discount the lease payments at the incremental borrowing rate and we use the or we use the realistic interest rate. But if the lesser's interest rate is less than the lessee's interest rate, then we would use the lesser's interest rate here as our incremental borrowing rate. So let's go up and do our test here. Uh, number one, um, for our transfer of ownership, well in this it's given in this example that the lease does not transfer any ownership. So we fail that test here. So the bargain purchase option, uh, we have a $6,000 option here to buy the lease, or uh, buy the asset at the end of the lease here. And it's fair value here is fair market value is $6,000. So it's likely that the leasee is not going to opt to buy it because there's really no bargain purchase here. And then our economic life test. So again, here at the bargain purchase option, it fails the test here at no. Now at no here, we don't pass the test. So um, thirdly here, our economic life test. Now, the lease term of the asset, our lease term has to be greater than 75% here of the economic life. Well, we got a three-year lease term, five-year life. So our lease term is only 60% here. Uh, and it's well, it doesn't surpass the 75% hurdle rate we need here for this, uh, more than the 75% of the economic life. So we failed that test here. And then again, there's no bargain uh, renewal period in here, so it's not 
included. So the next thing we have to do is we have to do this testing here for the, the recovery of our investment here. And this is where we're going to use these present value of our minimum lease payments. And we'll start here with the leases 12% since that's what is known here. And that's our incremental interest rate. So we have our rental payments here of $7,114. Now, because the lesser here is paying these executory costs, it can't be included in these rental payments. So that has to be subtracted out. The $1,000 uh, rental payment or uh, executory costs here have to be subtracted from the rental payments. So we end up with a total amount here of $6,114. And that's what we're going to discount back here. So we know the, the interest rate here at 12%. We got a three year lease and $6,114 for the uh, uh, payments here. So we discount those back here and we get amount here of $16,446. Now, the point we want to make here is we have to go in uh, because we know the lesser is either their interest rate or the pre present value of the minimum lease payments. We have to calculate that out to determine what the interest rate is here. Say we didn't know it was 15%, but we had the present value of the minimum lease payments here for the lesser. So we'd have to back that out here. And we would, in this case, the present value of the minimum lease payments was $16,053. Now, uh, we would back this out here. Uh, in determine it was 15%. We just put in the 6114 here for three years and for it to equal the present value here of $16,053, we determine that it's 15% interest rate. So our rule again here is to discount at the incremental borrowing rate. In this case, it's 12% here. And we would be using the realistic interest rate here. Uh, now, if the lesser's interest rate here was less than the lessee's interest rate, then we'd use the lesser's interest rate. But the, the fact is their interest rate here was fifth, the lesser's interest rate was greater than the lessee's interest rate. So the lesser's interest rate here of 15% was greater than the lessee's of 12%. So we go in and we use the uh, lessee's uh, minimum lease payments here of $16,446. The other rule of thumb is when we look at this, since our, if we just do the comparison here between the minimum lease payments, say uh, the lessee's our lessers minimum lease payments were greater than sixteen thousand four hundred forty six dollars here say or eighteen thousand then we knew that we would know that the intuitively know that the interest rate here would be less uh, than the uh, lessee's interest rate and if and if they are less here, the payment is less, say, uh, the, what we've shown here of 16,053 versus the 16,446. Then we know that the lesser's implicit interest rate is higher here. But in either, ca in either case here, we're going to use the lower interest rate here. So we'll, let's use the, we're going to use the present value of the minimum lease payments here for the, for the lessee to do our recovery of investment tests here. So next thing we have to look at is the fair market value here. Uh, and we got to do that. Te uh, it, it's it's twenty thousand dollars here for this leased asset. So our test rate is ninety percent here. So ninety percent of the fair market value is eighteen thousand dollars. So our recovery of our investment test, we do the present value of the minimum lease payments. It has to be then greater than ninety percent here of the fair market value of the asset. And in this case, we're using the present value here at sixteen thousand four hundred and forty-six dollars. It's less than. $18,000 here. So it, it doesn't meet, meet the hurdle rate. So we're going to fail this test here. We're not going to pass the test. We can also look at look at it in terms here of the 16446 divided by the f fair market value of this asset of 20000 and it's going to be 82%. So 82% is less than a 90% rate that we needed. So we failed the test. Now let's go and we're going to be looking at our testing results summarized on a decision diagram to determine and the type of lease that we would have. Now let's look at our decision diagram to determine the type of lease here. So we went through these tests here, the transfer of ownership, the bargain purchase option, and the lease term greater than 75% of the economic life of the asset here. And then if it's the present value of the minimum lease payments greater than or equal to 90% here of the fair value. Now if we could have answered yes to any one of those tests here, then it would have been a capital lease here for the lessee. But in our uh, example here, we had no, we answered no to each one of these tests. So, and then it would become an operating lease. So if you can't uh, 
pass any of these tests, it becomes an operating lease. So, if, and then if you can pass any one or more of the tests, it becomes a capital lease. And just re for re reviewing here, our leasee, we didn't transfer any ownership here, so it failed there. And the bargain purchase option, we couldn't pass that because it was 6,000 option versus 6,000 fair value. And then for economic uh, life tester here, we only had 60% here of the 75% that was required. And in our recovery of our investment, we only could recover here 82% versus the 90% uh, a fair a percent here of the fair market value. So our lease lessee should account for this lease as an operating lease because it does not meet any of the four requirements to qualify here as a capital lease and operating lease. But let's look at the example here, say for, uh, where we had our rental payments here of $7,114, but we didn't have any executive costs. They weren't involved here. So we had had our total rental payments that we would have had here for $7,114. Now if we discounted that back here for 12% for three years, we would have got a present value of our minimum lease payments here of $19,137. So in that case, we would have recovered our investment through this test here. So uh, the $19,137 would have been a great eight, greater than the $18,000 here at a 90% here of the fair market value. Actually, it was 96%. So we passed the hurdle rate here of 90%. So in this case, uh, in using the example here where we didn't include these ex executory costs, we would have passed this recovery of investment test and then it would be uh, classified here as a capital lease here by the lessee. Okay, now to briefly go over the uh, lessor's testing here using their decision diagram here. So the first thing we have to look at is does the lease meet any of the lessee's criteria, the one through four that we looked at? No, it didn't here. So no, since none of these lessee's criteria have been satisfied here. So we have a no, it didn't meet this test. So automatically we go down here and would be classified as an operating lease here by the lessee. Now, if it did meet any of those tests, then we'd have to look at a collectability of lease payments. Are they reasonably be certain here and then also the lessor's performance are these substantially complete. They'd have to pass both of those tests before we got down to the point here where we'd have to determine is the assets fair value equal to the lessor's book value here and if it was if they were equal uh, then it would be a direct financing lease but if they weren't equal it would be a sales type lease say for example uh, going up here and looking at our fair market value uh, since the fair market value equals of twenty thousand dollars equals the cost here of the asset of twenty thousand dollars so there's no profit in it here so that decision would be here that it would be a direct financing lease but to be a direct financing lease or a sales type lease it would have first had to pass these other two uh, tests here for the collectability of the lease payments. Are they reasonably certain? And then is the leaser's performance substantially complete? That is where there would be no uncertainties of cost to be incurred here by the lesser. But we failed our first test here. Does the lease meet any of the lessee's criteria? No. So it becomes an operating lease.